thank you so much. Thank you. I'll turn all the things off. Welcome, everyone. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the getting started in audio drama panel. Uh, we are going to start by saying that this year's official Dragon Con charity is the American Heart Association. Uh, we have buckets for donations, or you can text AHA2019 to 44321. And Dragon Con is going to match us up to $100,000. So let's take Dragon Con for all they're worth. <laughs> <laughs> And just remember at the end, if you like this panel, if you want us to improve, please make sure to rate it in the app so that you can let the track know that you want to see more content like this. So let's get started by our wonderful panelists introducing themselves. My name is JC Delatore. I'm the writer and creator of uh, Continuum Force, which is kind of like uh, Stargate meets Doctor Who and Vampires of Whitechapel, where our hashtag is make vampires scary again. <laughs> I am a writer for Continuum Force. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am Rita Delatore. I am a writer for Continuum Force. I also help to produce both shows, uh, and I'm also a voice actor for both shows. Hi, I'm Sean Wyland. I'm a, a voice actor for uh, a few different audio dramas. Uh, I also do audio editing and uh, some uh, production with uh, a director that I've been working with for a long time, Amanda, who couldn't make it this year, um, on Hex Support, Young Avengers Live. One day I'll get you on my show. <laughs> and I'm Ellie Collins. I run the audio drama The Blood Crow Stories. We are a queer horror show that will actually be doing a live show in this room directly after this panel. Ooh, premiering nice. our fourth season. Very nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so with getting started with audio drama, let's start at the very core beginning concept. Um, what is your show's full concept? Where do you want it to end, at least in your first season? <laughs> I feel like these are basic building blocks, but how do you guys approach conceptualizing your show before you begin it? Um, so when we first came up with Continuum Force, it was actually a long, long process. Um, we originally envisioned it as an audio play, then for some reason we got the crazy idea, hey, maybe we could make it into a TV series, and then that kind of uh, fell through, and then we went back to the audio drama series. So wh what we ended up doing um, is uh, I wanted to keep the, se the first season short enough for everybody to be able to, to get a grasp of what we were trying to do, um, but at the same time uh, get enough content to be able to, to attract the audience. So. Um, we, d we definitely um, broke our stories, and we had a, a specific story arc that we wanted to follow, and the season finale kind of leads into our second season, so the, it basically set up everything for that's going to go on forward. Uh, and the funny thing is, both Vampires of Whitechapel and Continuum Force actually started out as short stories that Jason had written probably like about 10 years ago. Yeah. And these two concepts, we, we always knew we wanted to flush out further. And like he said, you know, we tr figured we'd try a whole bunch of different mediums, but we finally settled, settled on audio drama because that's what's really capturing people right now and that's what yeah. people are really enjoying listening to. And not to mention, it's a lot easier than doing visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the great things about it is that um, we can also, uh, there's a lot of uh, audio dramas that are now being taken to the visual medium. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Homeland is one of the uh, great examples of that. Lore. Uh, lore is yeah. another one. So uh, there's definitely avenues to take it even after. Uh, so, so actually, when I've been working on audio dramas, we always we always start with like an initial like concept or pitch script, mm -hmm. saying like this is the idea, and then uh, it's usually myself, one or two other core actors, and the director writer, and it's always, is this something that we can do? in uh, absorbable chunks, i.e. 10 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, like, and can we see ourselves Can we see ourselves in these characters or doing these characters? And I'll, I'll actually just go out to my day job and be like, does anyone think this is neat? Because <laughs> <laughs> really, like, even if I love it and someone else is like, no, and if I get 90% you know, no, it's like, eh, maybe we should tweak it. And we'd figure out where else those characters can fit in an interesting situation. And we've actually have to go back to the drawing board, kept characters that we love, and be like, all right, we need to figure out some other track or path or story that these people need to exist in. Yeah, and for us with Blood Crow, I knew I wanted to make a horror show, because I love horror, but then the problem that you run into with a lot of horror audio dramas is that they just keep going, and the scary can kind of run out after a while, so I said, okay, we'll just do 
like, you know, self-contained seasons, kind of American Horror Story style. We'll just do one story at a time. And, um, and now our concept has actually shifted, uh, for anyone who follows us on Twitter, starting with season five, we'll be doing a quarterly show where we have a whole bunch of fans who got into horror writing because of us, and we are letting them write their own short stories That's to be cool. featured on nice. our show. Very cool. So because we've been able to do a lot with creating self-contained horror stories, we want to give back to the community and bring in um, marginalized creators who have a voice that should be heard. Um, so next up, we have equipment. I'm going to be taking us through all the stages of <laughs> starting one. Um, so there's kind of a common misconception that you need a lot of top of the line equipment to start, which is a lot of money, especially if this is a new thing for you. So where do you feel are components that you should really spend your money on? And where do you feel are concessions that you can go a bit cheaper on? Hmm. I think you really, I'm sorry, did you? Oh, you go no, first? I, <laughs> I was going to say, I think you really need a great mic, you know, and you need uh, a, a good area where you can record. Um, at doing also doing the editing and and working with the different voice actors who have all different types of uh, equipment because not all of our voice actors happen to be in a studio with us. Um, it it can be really challenging if there's uh, one particular area where there's like a lot of background noise or if their mic isn't quite up to par as everybody else's, um, and it can it can be an editing nightmare. So definitely. Uh, if you can if you can afford it I would say definitely get the best mic you can get and it doesn't have to be a thousand dollar Sennheiser yeah okay yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I mean they're great great microphones but they are expensive I mean start off small uh, get a, a snowball for example yeah, blue snowball. my you, home starter mic was a thirty dollar prime day deal yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we have a snowball we have a yeti we actually do have two sennheisers at home as well but that's only because we did uh we were also filmmakers so yeah we were also yeah. doing some filmmaking so a few of, years ago too yeah. but w we actually use the yeti and and the snowball a lot uh it really picks up sound very well the the ball picks up sound 360 degrees it, it so it's really nice because you can get your people together put it in the middle of a table and you can all have a nice, you know, long conversation or mm -hmm. do all your dialogue together and it really works yeah, out yeah, very and well. And we purchased one of those little uh, booths from uh, from Amazon that has like the foam around the it. Sound shield? It. Yeah, the sound shield? Yeah, I have one of those too. I have one of those too. And you'd be surprised at how well that actually works. And I mean. they're not expensive. They're under $100. You can yeah. probably yeah, get your I microphone. Mine for 60 yeah. the sound yeah. shield and it's just literally it's a metal like semicircle with foam in it, mm -hmm. and you can fold it up and put it away. Yeah. You can get all your equipment, your the software that you would need, and probably for what under three hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, easily, easily under three hundred. Yep. And I would think software is kind of one of those places you can make a concession on, just because Absolutely. like yes. things like Audacity Absolutely. are free. Yep. It's easy to get started with, easy to at least do your core elements, and especially when you're getting started, just to learn. Yeah. Oh, we, we used Audacity for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah I probably used Audacity for about ten years. And, and we ha we have the Adobe Suite, but I I, of I often u uh, use Audacity more than than mm -hmm. even Adobe. So I, I I will say so I software is probably where I've spent most of the money in my life, but that's because mm -hmm. I started out in theater doing sound design. Yeah. So they're, they're like, hey, this is I'm 19, like this is Pro Tools, you can use the rest of your life. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I love Audacity's uh, background noise reduction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so I like. It's so good. Oh my god, it's really good. And if, so if you're going to go that route, and let's say, especially with background noise, if you have remote actors, mm -hmm. make sure they capture an extra like 30 mm -hmm. seconds Absolutely. of, that, that's of key. them not talking so that you can actually use that software efficiently. Yep. And room tone. Yeah, room, room tone. tone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, t yeah, to help clean up our audio, we, uh, we actually took advantage of the big sale on RX Elements, and they have some excellent, fun tools that... RX so Element <laughs> just cleans that audio yeah. up to... I mean, you just click a button and it's done. Yeah. So what so room cool. tone and noise reduction does is when you give it 30 seconds of you not talking and there's nothing else interfering, it's going to hear all the like the fans and the air conditioner and yep. the general sound of your room. So then when you select that, say, hey, the stuff that's in here, that's noise. And then when you select the rest of your audio and clean it up, it's going to remove that out of it as much as it possibly can. And it just makes your audio so crisp. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so next um, we are going to go to scheduling your show. 
How often <laughs> do you intend to release it? How do you make a schedule you can stick to? Yeah, I think the the most imp one of the most important things when you're developing an audio drama is to be reliable for your audience. Mm -hmm. You have to be there every two weeks or every one week or whatever your your uh, your regular rotation is, you have to be there. Um, and you have to give them a, a full idea of the start and the stop. We're going for 12 episodes. Uh, we're gonna be there every two weeks and we're gonna be, uh, once we're done, you know, we'll be back in you know, however long it's gonna be. But definitely hit those dates. You know, uh, we, we tried to you know, make sure that all of our episodes were done before we even started releasing just because we wanted to make sure that there was not gonna be any kind of gaps. We didn't have that foresight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we didn't have foresight with. We decided to do both shows at the same at the time. same time, <laughs> alternating do weeks. That. Don't do that. Don't do that. How? <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very stupid. Don't so do that. So we were doing a show every single week, and it about killed me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of editing. <laughs> it was a lot <laughs> of editing. It was. Yes, it was. <laughs> People look at me all the time, like four hours for. Yeah. 25 minutes? And, yeah. and I made the horrible mistake. Oh, four of, hours? I, I, <laughs> yeah, four well, hours? How did you accomplish I'm that miracle? I'm producing a non-drama right now. Oh, okay. That still takes me that long, and yeah. it's two people. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, uh, I, I know in audio drama, uh, he does most of the editing, and it typically takes, it takes him maybe two days yeah. Yeah. to edit one episode. That's also because I'm kind of like a perfectionist, so I want to try to make sure that. And I'm, I'm also it. doing sound design. I'm doing basically everything, so it's, I'm cheap. What about you with scheduling? Uh, scheduling is, so we have chronically, and I say we have any, any group that I work with, uh, of just having too many people. And, uh, and even if the cast requires it, it's just, hey, we have 23 people uh, in, in the show, and you're like, oh, God, how are we going to coordinate the schedules? And it, it either, I've had it fall apart, just completely die, because you just you can't get the right people in at the right time. The one's in school, and one's got That's a retirement it. party to go to. Doodle scheduler oh is the God. best. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's even Doodle is where you go. The studio will be open on these days. Yes. Select which day you want, buddy. And so it's I, so nice. <laughs> having a reliable forethought schedule saying, look, it's these days, these times. Are you free? Make sure you are free. Mm -hmm. uh, and knowing ahead of time. So like with uh, the Dracula radio play, one thing, one thing that was nice about release dates is it was every date that there was an entry in Bram Stoker's Dracula is the date that that episode was released. Date on date on date on date. Ooh. So we knew when it was happening, but we were also recording three months ahead of time. Yeah. So there were oh, occasionally. Oh, what's that like? <laughs> it was, I liked it because like it was November I think when the story ends and like I I finished like I was Quincy Morris so I died in a spoiler. Uh, in October, <laughs> uh, but you know, so like we recorded October and January, like so I was yeah. just like, I'm just waiting for it to come out. Like I just want to hear my death scream. <laughs> yeah, for us, I went okay. Well, standard release schedule is first and the fifteenth, and I was very like anxious starting the show. I was like, but I don't want people to forget about us since we're a different story between seasons. There's not really like a hook to pull them in, so we just won't have a break between seasons. Oh wow. We lit <laughs> we literally do yeah. People who listen to Blood Crow, we do first and the fifteenth. Every single month, 12 months out of the year. Wow. We do not have a break, which is part of the switch to the quarterly format. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us some time to breathe because often, like, um, we released part one of episode 18 tomorrow morning, and uh, I'm still writing episode 19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh spoilers for Blood Crow people. <laughs> uh, because I very m we'll get to writing in a second, but I very much stress about the last two episodes of a season. Because you got to have the penultimate and the satisfaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, also, allowing time for re records. Yeah. For whatever reason, something nope. gets. Corrupted. I'm just blessed with a beautiful cast <laughs> that, like, we we have very we have very rarely had to retake things unless a unless they come to me and go, I just really didn't like my performance. I'm like, I wouldn't have let you leave the booth if it was bad. <laughs> They're like, hey, please do it again. Fine. And then we just use the first take. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we haven't had to do that many retakes. Just a couple times. We've yeah, had just to do a, just it. a few times when you know they might have mispronounced a word or something, and it, and it's a little t tougher for us since we do have uh, we do work with remote actors. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and we don't really do like over Skype or anything like that. We just yeah. kind of give them the script. They read uh, read the lines with the multiple takes, and then we get it back and then try to match it up the best we can. Yeah, um, that's why I'm glad we're in person because yeah. our lead actor, yeah. our lead character, the season's name is Keisha. Oh God. The amount, the amount of takes we have, 
of someone saying Kesha. Kesha, Kesha. <laughs> and you just hear from like outside the booth, myself and Scott going, Kesha! <laughs> 18 episodes, it's still happening. Yeah. <laughs> so next, let's move on to the writing aspect yeah. of it. Um, script writing software rec- recommendations, special considerations for writing an audio drama when it comes to sound complexity and sound placement. Mm-hmm. Um, because not always are the logical sounds of a scene what all should be in there. So how do you guys approach writing? Um, so I use Final Draft because I'm an old film honk. So I, <laughs> I, 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 it's my comfort zone. Um, but you can basically use whatever you know uh, writing tool that you need. I mean, you can do it in Word if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as for uh, handling the sound effects and things like that, I do write my sound effects in. Um, I don't necessarily get overly detailed since I'm usually the one that does all the sound design. And <laughs> You're editing. like I know it. So there. I kind of know <laughs> what I want to hear, <laughs> but um, but just to remind myself, I will write some stuff in. Say, hey, you know, there needs to be footsteps here. There needs to be, you know, uh, uh, sound effect. Dramatic music comes in. You know, that kind of thing. So. So same for me. I use Final Draft. I used to use Amazon Story Writer. I know. Thank you, oh, Amazon, for it, Amazon. getting rid of that because that was a nice free service. Yes. Yeah, mine kind of mine that I'm about to recommend went the way of the dodo as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not a writer, <laughs> or at least I would never claim to be. I've written things, but uh, I always have someone go. Well, script-wise, but what do you like written in the script? But from from either a sound designer or an actor standpoint, I love spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it for getting my lines, so I know exactly like kind of where my lines are occurring. Mm-hmm. Um, just as, and then I can always have notes next to it that says, you know, this is the dramatic action of the scene. This is what's going on. This is maybe a sound effect that's playing. So I kind of understand the, the you depth of the scene TV better. You come from TVVA, don't you? I come from theater. Yeah. But yeah. But uh, that's, the, that's the funny thing, though, because, you know, I, I tried to work with a sound designer uh, to offload some of the work. Mm-hmm. And when I started, they asked for a spreadsheet like that, and I started to, to break that down. And I'm like, well, if I'm actually going in there and getting that information, why don't I just do it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I Just from my point of view, it's, it's, it's been handy. Uh, so I did an audio comic book recently. Huh. And uh, the first thing I did is I took the comic book and I made I put post-its everywhere there were going to be sounds. And then I went back there and I made a spreadsheet. So I sent it back to the director. I was like, look, does this look right to you? And then he'd go like, oh, yeah, that page. Oh, I didn't even think there'd be sound on that page. I'm like, look, there's no words, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better have something to go along with the visuals. Uh, so, so I find that very helpful from a sound design standpoint. And if I'm doing something remote where I'm just I'm getting a script and I'm not, I'm not interacting in a directorial kind of way with mm-hmm. or, you know, as an actor, then I, I do kind of like that breakdown, partly so I just know I don't miss a line. Sure. Um, now, now, do you need that kind of interaction? Like, do you, do you if I, you work remotely, do you want somebody like on Skype telling you, uh, I don't really like the way you did that take? I like it, um, and I've done it after like working on a season of a show. I know my character, mm-hmm. and I can I can bang out those lines no problem. But I really, really do enjoy that that kind of interactive, collaborative work at the beginning, because gotcha. I really then get a sense for what the director's seeing and what they're hearing in my voice, which might be different from what I think I'm portraying. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find that invaluable. I just love it. Gotcha. See, and I love that from a writer's perspective because often the chemistry of the actors and just letting them riff off each other has uh, come up with some beautiful things for anyone who listens to Blood Crow. Um, Silver and Everett were never meant to be a couple. <laughs> But the actors just had so much chemistry together, and they're like, I don't know, like I'm kind of reading this like they used to be a thing. <laughs> and so they just started doing it, and I was like, that sounds beautiful and perfect, okay, and just like continued to write. Um, but writing-wise for me, I use Celtex, C-E-L-T-X. Um, they have stopped support for audio drama format really? on their website. Oh, wow. But if you have already used it, and you have an audio drama script, you can just copy it and then erase it and it still works. Mm. (laughs) And so that's what I did. (laughs) Um, But I like it because it auto formats, which just keeps me going because 99% of Blood Crow Stories is written at four o'clock in the morning (laughs) when I can't sleep. And I'm like, you know what's great at 4 a.m.? Scaring myself and just bang out those scripts. that'll get you to sleep. (laughs) Yeah, well, because it's really nice when you can just be like character, enter, and it already formats it for dialogue. Mm hit enter twice it auto formats for sound yeah um i don't write too much sound unless it's key of like this person walked out of the room so that we know who's going where um because like we've had scenes where uh there's a huge massacre in the in the first season 
And when we put in all the sounds that made sense, like, okay, people are gonna run this way, people are gonna run this way, there's gonna be this scream, there's gonna be this attack sound. And once we layered it all in, we're like, this sounds like a mess. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we can take out the footsteps. We as the audience know people are running, this is mm -hmm. bad. And so t we'll take out half the screams, we'll boost up this. So in writing, there's a lot of like, you have no idea how messy something's gonna sound. Yeah until you put it because I come from a lot of film work. So I'm used to Foley. We have to account for every single thing yes. that will make a sound. <laughs> and so, and we generate all of our own Foley. So we have a little wow. bit more control over it. So when um, someone in season two got their hand stepped on and crushed, we had more control over that sound because we're like, okay, well, we'll do some carrots, we'll do some celery, we'll do some lettuce, and we'll kind of mix them together really weird trips to Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a tiny side note just on Foley? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, since straws started getting replaced with uh, reusable straws, or uh -huh. not reusable, uh, uh, the metal straws? No, the, the... There's, so there's plastic-ish ones that are like a soy oh, yeah, base yeah. that they disintegrate after a while. Those make some of the best bone cracking sounds because they're actually more brittle than old straws. So if you take a handful of them, you just go, oh my God. Like the sound is amazing. So we layer Stealing from your local restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> so we layer eggshells, celery, carrot, and lettuce. Or um, in iceberg. Oh yeah. Yeah. In a uh, in the, <laughs> in the most recent season, in season three, we had to have someone eaten by a demon, and my wife was like, "Just give me a head of cabbage." <laughs> and sure enough, she tore into that cabbage on the mic, and it's disgusting. <laughs> um, so yeah, with and then with writing. It's a lot of, um, some people do really well when you block apart time and you really do it. Um, I write better when it is spur of the moment for me, when it's, when you get an idea and you just decide like, this is just where I'm gonna sit for the next two hours until this streak runs out of me. Um, which can be hell on your schedule, but sometimes it can be the, the best way that you write. Cause some of, I think some of our best Blood Crow episodes were just from those moments where I wasn't working on it. I was looking at something else or writing just like a little short story and then just going like, oh, yes. Because <laughs> um, for anyone who's heard season one, um, when Barry dies and his twin sister is there, you know, Darla was built as this very like no nonsense, fighty, fighty character. And then I was like, man, next episode, she's got to deal with Barry's death. And I was like, I'm not ready to write like this angry person the whole time. And then I was reading something else and I was like, oh my God, what if she was just devastated and didn't want to like live anymore? Like just cut that out of the character. And I think that's one of our most powerful scenes is when Malsef shows up to her and he's like, ha ha, I'm going to kill you. And she's like, then just do it. I don't care. After spending, you know, 12 episodes at that point being the one to like punch a demon in the face and she's just like, nope. And that just came out of not forcing myself to work. But I know some people have to. And so find which way works for you. Yep. And next we're going to go to casting. Um, who's going to play your characters? What steps do you take to maintain audio quality and consistency? <laughs> and uh, just how do you go about finding your cast? Um, oh, go ahead. I'll go first. Uh, Dip amongst your family and friends. <laughs> and why? Because they're free. <laughs> or, or very cheap, yes. Or very cheap. <laughs> uh, although, um, uh, we did, uh, for our main characters, we definitely wanted uh, professional actors to kind of handle the ma main roles and then used our family and friends to kind of fill out everything else. Um, but uh, we used, uh, you know, I knew this question was coming and I didn't, can't even think of the website. I think it was... Uh, Fiverr? Uh, no, it wasn't. Fi well, we did. We do uh, go to Fiverr every once in a while, but one, uh, the one, the main one that we use, I believe, is called Voices. Uh, Voices dot com. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's one of the main ones, as well as Casting Call Club. I think is the other one. Um, yeah. yeah, we went through those a uh, couple of. I just uh, posted to local actor Facebook groups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Facebook is a great resource as well. We, yeah. we go to all the, the Facebook uh, voice acting groups, um, put our rates out, uh, dis describe the role, and usually we get a lot of great auditions. I, I like working with the same people. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so, so like we have like a core group of, of, of friends that I know, either from theater or from bartending for 15 years, of just other actors that were in the restaurant industry. 
Well, so well, it's yeah. cool because you know now that we've got these both of these shows established and we've got some professional voice actors we're working with, we're probably going to continue to work oh, with most it. of oh, them. Yeah. We've, we've already, already done, done it. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, for future shows and you know other seasons. Uh, because we've got this core group now, and we know how good they are, and we know that they they deliver. You know their abilities, you know their, you know their vocal tones, yeah. And, yeah. and and what's even the best part is that they're also passionate about the shows yeah. as well. It's like we brought them on because hey, it's going to be a paying gig. But when they got the script, they read the script, they did their lines, they just got so they got into, into it, it. Yeah. and now they just want to continue to be a part of the show. Yeah, like I know uh, Kat, who plays Ariana in uh, Vampires of Whitechapel. Uh, she, we actually did like kind of this behind the scenes interview thing with her for our Patreon, uh, and she just went on and on about how she loved the vampire genre, how she uh, hated, you know, where it had gone, and the mm -hmm. the way that we took it, um, where it's a bit darker, a, uh, a lot a, darker, quite a bit darker. <laughs> um, it is not family. Friendly. And she loved the idea of Jack the Ripper being a vampire and and that kind of thing. So uh, she uh, and she really. Uh, embodied herself in the character and kind of took over the character and uh, a lot of of what became Ariana is a lot of what Kat did with it and uh, she's she's been phenomenal couldn't ask for a better actress yeah I got all of my cast from we put out the casting calls but then only our friends showed up <laughs> <laughs> and and I would even I went to Facebook groups specifically for you know diverse groups of people going hey we would love to have people of color on this show and then our one friend <laughs> would show up. We're like, okay. <laughs> um, for anyone who listened to season one, Josie Valentine was a three-month project to find an Asian woman to play Josie. And then it was my coworker. <laughs> I was like, hey, can you sing? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, cool. Can you please be at this place <laughs> at this time? And she's been phenomenal. She's been with us the whole time. Because um, probably about, so out of a cast of 30, uh, only about four of our actors had ever acted before. Oh, wow. So if you listen to Blood Crow Stories, those are all brand new people that have not acted or they have like a light history in theater, but not really much acting. But with them being my friends, I knew how to talk to them, how to pull voices out of them. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone who, uh, and then I've worked with them on making their demo reels because Amanda Van Heil, who plays Fiona in season one, She's a very Disney princess voice. And I just, <laughs> oh, I love Amanda. I'm playing her character later tonight because she is at PAX West. Um, but when she was making a demo, just having that rapport, a friendship with her, um, because I'm a character actor, so I'm used to doing voices of an entire gamut. And I just worked with her and worked with her and worked with her, and now she has an orc voice. <laughs> so she can actually do, she can do an orc warrior, and it, that voice booms out of her, and I'm like, yes! Awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, when you dip in with friends and family, you have that rapport where you can go, okay, you remember that time when we went to this place and your voice did this? Like, do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that does become a really, a really great thing. And then keep, keep in mind people's commitments, yes. their, their lives. You know, like if you cast a parent on your show, you're gonna have a little bit more of an unpredictable schedule with them. Um, if you cast a student, you're gonna probably need to do more night recordings with them. Um, and then some people might have a more chaotic life, but if they have a great um, great voice, then you're just gonna wanna make sure to stay on top of them and be like, please have this done by this day and then check up with them and follow up with them. I am a dingus, so when I'm on things, I need to be reminded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tunnels. <laughs> every, every time you messaged me, I was like, I have to get those lines done. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so when you're casting, be mindful of of the voices that they can do and where you think their voice can go. Um, like, my voice sounds like this. I used to play children on things. Um, I got started in voice acting, voicing a eight-year-old witch in a fan dub. And her name was Aiko. And I did that for probably about four years, maybe, and then got into my 20s. <laughs> that voice tapered off a little. Um, but so, but I can still kind of dip back into that well. So work with your actors and find where their voices can go. And so with that, let's move on to releasing the podcast. So, you know, you've conceptualized it, you got your equipment, scheduled it, wrote it, cast it, acting, 
Now releasing. So which release platform is right for you that you prefer? Um, and what are the benefits of it that you feel versus others? Because hmm. I think we all release on different formats. I believe so, yes. Um, so uh, we release through WordPress. Um, we use the, uh, the Blueberry PowerPlay uh, to release our episodes. Um, we uh, self-registered with Amazon, or with Amazon, with uh, Apple, with Google, with all these other. So uh, we did a lot of the, the legwork that a lot of the, uh, the other host providers will do for you. Um, reason is, is because we wanted to keep our costs down. Um, we didn't want to spend an arm and a leg, you know, paying, uh, you know, like Lisbon or somebody like that uh, to to uh, dis distribute everything for us. It's a lot, a lot of work, um, but we were we were able to get on all the major uh, major apps, and you know, it it serves a purpose. And all we have to pay is our host fee, which is like like sixteen bucks a month. So, and uh, with that, WordPress is great. Their statistics not so great. Yeah, we a we actually do uh, pay an upcharge for like ten bucks to just to get good download statistics because uh, mm. uh, through Blueberry or, or through PowerPress, uh, just because uh, the WordPress statistics suck. <laughs> what about you? So, so actually, for my non-dramatic podcast, I use Blueberry, <laughs> uh, and it, it is it is. I think I'm the only SoundCloud ho up here. So it's very easy <laughs> to use, but for all the audio dramas, it's always been SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I. I think it's it's partly because having having done so many audio dramas before, I thought I'm just going to do my own fun little thing. Um, it was just, just, just cheap and easy. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. can get your stuff out there. It's easy to share. Send people links. Send family links. All the people that helped on your project. Bring the yeah. project more links to share. Um, well, and SoundCloud's gotten very. Um like they cottoned on to the fact that a bunch of us podcasters were using them because they were cheap. Because yeah. it's 15 bucks a month, unlimited uploads, and you know you get your RSS feed, and you can just go. And that's the legwork part of it is going to every distributor and being like, "Here's my feed, mm -hmm. here's my feed." <laughs> um, but with knowing that they have podcasters coming in, they now have scheduled uploads, which is why I am not freaking out right now because tomorrow's the first. <laughs> I was able to schedule the release like four days ago. So, and being able to front load that in, um, their tag searches are better. They now have uh, the Pulse app, which is all of your statistics, which can go like 30 days, a week, or a year. And seeing those lifetime statistics can be cool or soul crushing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, I personally appreciate SoundCloud for low cost and the fact that they are learning. They're learning that they are a part of the podcasting community now and they're making very earnest efforts to say, hey, podcasters, what do you need from us? And all podcasters scream, scheduled uploads, God. Because <laughs> la last year, um, for when we were here at the con, we were in the FedEx Kinkos paying an ungodly amount of money per minute to upload Blood Crow stories. Because <laughs> wow. we are like, it has to go up at midnight. We can't screw this up. <laughs> And uh, well, so you know things like scheduled uploads. That, that's kind of the great thing about WordPress, though, is because I can I can upload uh, the file to our back our, our server. Um, it won't be public or anything so until I actually uh, schedule the post, and I can schedule the post weeks months in advance. Yeah, SoundCloud yeah. does that now okay. because, and that's why that's why I appreciate them because, yeah. and especially when they were like, because a while back there was like this threat of them going under. And then a bunch of SoundCloud rappers put together the money to save them. And so, and that was when they really started embracing the audio drama community as well and started going, hey, you guys are faithfully giving us money. <laughs> what can we do for you? And I'll, appre I'll appreciate and support a company that wants to take that step. And I will say all, all the legwork that, that we've mentioned about, uh, <clears throat> about submitting your RSS feeds to different uh, uh, like Apple and Google and whatnot, that's not that hard. No. Like no. It's, it's actually, like it, it is extra work. It just takes time. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's yeah. super like it's it's been made for you to be easy to do. It's not something you've done before. Don't and worry about it. Highly recommend make a trailer for your show. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put that on your feed because yeah. most of the apps will not even touch your feed unless there's already an episode on it. Absolutely. And you don't want to release okay. your first episode into nothingness and be like, our show comes out November first, and then by like December fifteenth, Apple's like, okay, we got you up now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so make a trailer. <laughs> yeah. So 
Any other uh, final advices and comments before we turn it to questions? Um, I do. Yeah. Uh, for those that might not want to do their own Foley, like us, <laughs> <laughs> there are really amazing applications out there where you can uh, pick up, you know, the sound effects and even your own soundtracks and music. Uh, audio blocks is one. Yep. Um, I also like uh, an application called Soundly. Um, they're a pay application, but it, I, I don't believe the, the monthly fee is all that much money. I, I think it's like 10 or $12 a month, yeah. but their library of a, sound effects is immense. Yeah, and like, for example, there was a scene in, in Vampires of Whitechapel where uh, one of the vampires is basically eating somebody, <laughs> and, and uh, I wanted to have it really, really gory. Um, so I found these em amazing effects of just, I mean, bone crunching, all kinds of goriness. Don't listen to that episode at night, uh, for the so, love of God. So much so, <laughs> I, I actually had to pull over, hurl over and say, uh, did I go too far? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I found it all in Soundly. It was, it was a great library to work in. Well, you know, in. Our, our, uh, in season three, since it's our cyberpunk season, the little space door open and close. That's an Xbox starting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an Xbox. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, music-wise, check out Free Music Archive. Yes. Um, fantastic for for background noise. Um, we were lucky one year and had a soundscape artist who did a full soundtrack for Black Chapel, which is why it keeps messing me up that y'all say White Chapel because yeah. we we had a serial killer yeah. in a Wild West town called Black Chapel, ah. and. Uh, but and then this season we're very lucky with since it's the cyberpunk genre my whole family is a bunch of industrial music nerds so we just said hey every friend that has music you want to promote come here <laughs> <laughs> cool it's a super valid point too like i i mean I, just about everyone knows someone that's into music or plays music or makes it so like i i ping my friends constantly that are in bands i don't care where they are like hey do you want to you know, do you want to do the opening music for the show? Do you want to do something for this or that? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they're like, oh, my God, free press? Yes. Yeah, we, we do that. That's why if you ever look at our show notes, every single band that is used is always credited. We wound up making a band for this season, which you can buy the album 35 Louder on Bandcamp because uh, this season has a rock star character, and we let the person cool. who plays the rock star make an album. And so all those songs are actually available as an album. So, so for Vampires of Whitechapel, we actually uh, reached out to a band that we met here at Dragon Con a few years ago. Nice. Uh, you guys might have heard of, heard of them, Midnight Syndicate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we reached out to them. And, 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 and the, the funny thing was I reached out to them because, you know, we love their music. I mean, we, they're, they're basically ha Halloween goth, you know, they're right <laughs> up our alley, right? Um, so w I reached out to them and I'm like, kind of like, hey, so we would love to use some of your music in our podcast. How much would that cost? And, you know, he gave me a specific figure and then he's like, but uh, if you just kind of want to, you know, do this promotion swap deal, then we would be happy to, to you know, as long as you say, you say at the beginning of the episode that this is, you know, music by Midnight Syndicate, and at the end of the episode, music by Midnight Syndicate, you can use our entire library. And I was like, oh my God. We had the same, yes. we had the same <laughs> deal with American Murder Song, because on, um, season two, Black Chapel, if anyone here has ever seen the movie Repo the Genetic Opera, yes, our second season's soundtrack... Anytime you hear someone singing, it's Terrence Zdenek yep. and nice. his band American Murder Song because they were here at Dragon Con. I was like, yeah, I'm writing this Western horror season. I've just been jamming to American Murder Song while I write it. And they're like, can we work with you? And I was like, please, can I put your music in my show? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then this season, we are so very lucky to have Angel Spit, um, who wound up being so excited to be involved in the show that... Uh, Zug von Rock, who is the lead singer of Angel Spit, is now a demon in season three. Because <laughs> cool. uh, we, because it's very meta, and so we had him like introduce himself as in a show. So in this show that takes place 200 years in the future, Angel Spit still has the same lead singer. <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of times, especially support indie artists. You know, mm -hmm. you might not be able to pay them, but promote them out the butt if you can. Um, because that's how communities like these grow. And, and it also helps because if they already have a, an established fan base as well, they promote the, the show to their fan base. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, our music is now featured in Vampires of Whitechapel, and that gets you downloads. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a lot of, this community is a lot of I scratch your back, you scratch mine, yeah. because we all are just trying to put our stories out there. So sharing resources 
is a huge yeah. thing. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. Don't assume people are just going to say no because mm -hmm. you never know. You never we reached know. out to Midnight Syndicate thinking we'd be paying thousands of dollars for their music and we didn't have to pay anything. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and we I'm love a, their music. I'm a character actor. I tell people all the time, if you want me to do a voice, just call me. Like, I'll do it. I don't care. I have 87 voices in my bank. Like, you know, and that's part of the community helping each other. Like, I've done Darla on the tunnels because it's one of my favorite voices that I've ever done. And so, you know, people have asked me to do Darla. People have asked me to do Elevator Woman, which is my other favorite voice. I'll go over her at the character voices panel. Um, I don't want to throw out my voice right now. <laughs> you ever just meet people and you're like, my life won't be complete until I can do that woman's voice. <laughs> it was someone at a con day drunk at 11 a.m. asking where the spa was. <laughs> and she sounded like she just ate cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite voice to do was uh, uh, Agent Cantello on Vampires or Whitechapel because I actually got to be myself a lot. Oh, yes. Which myself means I was cussing a lot. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's and that was so much fun to just yeah. be a really big B. <laughs> <laughs> Are there kids here? No. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like um, this season for Blood Crow. I play two completely diametrically opposed characters. I play a Irish Cerberus, <laughs> and I play a robot. <laughs> and uh, in a recent episode, they are both talking to each other, and just through character acting, I'll do both of them at the same time. So I'll go, please stop doing that. Why not? I'm just making breakfast. And just have to go back and forth. And uh, that's always a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like community helps community. Just because we're up here doesn't mean like we won't help you. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. we have resources you can ask us anytime. Well, let's put it this way. My husband and I were in the audience this time last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and look at them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Continuum Force and Vampires of Whitechapel didn't exist this time last year. Yep. We sat in on an Adventure Zone panel. Yeah. We, with you know, McElroy. with McElroy. Yeah. Yeah. And he inspired us so much, we got into audio drama, and well, we love it. Uh, and I also sat in on one of your panels last year, and, and I actually uh, really got the, the bug to do it. So. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's what I want, and that's why I love doing these panels, because... I feel like so, so many people have stories in them that they don't realize it's not that hard to put your story out there. It's work. It's yeah. definitely work, but it's not... Don't be so scared of putting your story out there because even if you only get one listener, that's one listener that you just made their day by telling your story, and mm -hmm. that is worth all the effort in the world. And, and, and that's... Oh, I'm sorry. And, and that's the thing. At the end of the day, we didn't do it because we wanted to have listeners. Yeah. We did it because it was a creative outlet for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had a story to tell, and there was a story that, that uh, we really wanted to uh, get out into the world. And, you know, if other people dug, dug it, great. You know? yeah. If you didn't, okay, we're still going to produce it anyway. Yep. And, yeah. But one, one of the, the great things, and I don't, I don't know if you get this with Blood Coast Stories, I'm sure you do, uh, where it when you get really passionate fans, you know, fans that just Our are so <laughs> into it. I, I, there are Discord people yeah. in here. I know you're in here. <laughs> we, have a, we have a Discord with our fans, and being able to have that personal interaction, yeah. one of the channels is called Latest Episode Discussions, and people have taken to live posting yeah. their feelings oh, wow. of the episode. So I don't know the, how I'd feel about that. Oh, no, I, I love it. The, day that it. the day that it happens, I just leave Discord up on my computer, and I just watch that channel. That's cool. Because I get to watch them in real time be like, I'll trust this person. I'll trust. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking or, of speaking of passionate fans, we had uh, one episode of Vampires of Whitechapel that ended in quite a nasty cliffhanger, and it, you know, this this particular person actually uh, it, it was it was kind of interesting because he uh, he really was into the female character lead character of Vampires of Whitechapel, um, Ariana, and it was almost to the point where it was. I don't want to say uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I think he would have stalked her if he was a, if she was a real. If character. she was a real person, it, it, it might have been a weird situation. But uh, we fake killed her. And <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, this person just lost their mind. <laughs> and, and I'm like going back. I'm just. 
I'm just laughing as as I'm seeing him just freaking out, and I'm like, don't worry, it's gonna be all right. And, but but the whole two weeks between the episodes, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's really sad what happened to Ariana. You know, I don't know how we're gonna go on. Uh, and and here's the, another cool thing: uh, when when you're promoting your shows, have fun with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We actually have Twitter accounts for each of our vampires. Yes. So nice. when Ariana, you I know, would die. You know, <laughs> fake die. We had the other two vampires losing their crap on Twitter too. Yes. They're like, "Where is she? I can't yes. sense her." We're blah, going blah, blah. on a van page because we want revenge. <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to see how passionate your fans get? Kill a baby chicken. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke for the worst year of my life after killing off that stupid little chicken. Oh my. <laughs> Kill one chicken. They don't let you forget about it. <laughs> Can I give one more piece of advice? Yes. Before we open it to questions, because we have 15 minutes left. You know, b- before you put your audio drama in there, you know, even before you start developing your story, listen to as many audio dramas as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Get a feel for what the people really like. You actually reach out to people. I mean, that's and what we did. We reached mm-hmm. out to people on Facebook, on uh, Instagram. Discord is great. Uh, Discord, Twitter. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we got a feel for what the people were wanting and what they, you know, really love. And we kind of incorporated those ideas and ideals into our yeah. podcast. And on top of that, uh, listen to stuff that's in your, dr- in, in your genre. So, like, if you're wanting to do sci-fi, listen to the sci-fi shows. If you're wanting to do horror, listen to the horror shows. Uh, and, and really kind of get an idea of what they're doing because... You know, there's there's a specific formula that that seems to work for for a lot of the the more popular shows, and uh, I'm not saying you copy that kind of uh, look, but you get to see what people are into, and and then that kind of you can kind of gravitate your show to that. And I'm oddly on the opposite side of that. I with putting together a horror show, I don't listen to other horror shows. Really, <laughs> I listen to comedy shows, drum drama shows. I listen to shows of completely different genres so that I can learn new things from them. Hmm. Okay. Because drama shows were where I learned pulling that like sometimes the more terrifying things was the internal Absolutely. pain of the person as opposed to the monster. Because mm-hmm. um, especially with season one with Mouse of manipulating people's emotions. And I learned a lot of that from studying drama. Um, so we're gonna open it up to questions. Just raise your hand and I'll try and throw this box to you. <laughs> I. I may be a lesbian, but I didn't play softball. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Uh, What are some of the unique uh, issues when it comes to writing a script where you don't have that visual element and how, like, a lot of the radio dramas I've listened to are just pure dialogue without a whole lot of narration? Do you guys Uh, have suggestions on how to approach scripts and how to think about stories within that context? Um... So I am fortunate in that I have a friend that is blind, and I ask them, what makes you really mad when you're watching a movie? And they said, it's, it's the gestures. So um, be cognizant of those kind of things. Um, like we have a scene, I don't know if it's a spoiler, I don't know what episode it's in, um, of two characters hugging. And obviously you can't do hugging in it, so I had to think about okay, these two characters are reuniting and they're gonna hug. So one of them should comment on the hug mm-hmm. of just like, it feels so good to hug you again. You know, so, so they give the little like, hmm, and then comment on that. So think about the, the nonverbal action and try and find a way to make someone comment on it. Um, Cause we made some missteps with that with um, in season one, Darla is very much in love with Josie and there's a scene where she completely like falls over a table and chair like because Josie compliments her, and we didn't sell that the way that I thought. So it just sounds like mm. Josie compliments her. There's a bunch of ruckus, and then the scene's over. I'd say there's also a, a lot of a lot of sounds we make as people when we like using the hug as an example. Like mm-hmm. you change your tone, mm-hmm. and you lean in, and you hug someone. And, hey, I missed you. Mm-hmm. And it's that th- there's always like a little breath you take that. Mm. Or, or imagine hugging somebody you know, so hard that your voice becomes muffled as you are like yeah when you're yeah. Ha- talking yeah. into someone's yeah. shoulder yeah talking yeah. into somebody's yeah. shoulder or yeah. neck for example so there's there's uh, lots of lots of things that we don't always realize that we do that auditorially make a difference but yeah and people will pick up on them too mm-hmm. you know just ways that ways that your voice and personality change in certain um, certain scenes try to stay away from handshakes. 
<laughs> They're really hard, especially in a Western season when that's how people made deals, and you go, crap. <laughs> and it just doesn't sound good when someone you hear, deal. <laughs> that's a good firm grip. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good, exactly. That's a firm grip. Command hand. <laughs> or, or you know what? You can do the, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's our advice. Yep. Anyone else got a question? Yeah, if you want to toss it back. It's a microphone, so you can speak yeah, straight into it. Speak into the box. Yeah. So, so what can you do with an audio drama that you can't do with other forms of art? Um, communicate. Uh, so, like, especially in horror, um, in an audio drama, I have to rely so much on things that are not visual, mm -hmm. which I've been a horror filmmaker. And when you're a horror filmmaker, you're like, oh, a shadow passing over a doorway, terrifying. You get to audio drama, you're like, I have no shadows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so um, a thing that I always highly recommend uh, is the use of binaural audio, which yes. is using your left and right headphones. Because yes. um, especially if you listen to Black Chapel on headphones, every time they're riding on horses, it will go from one ear to the other. Yep. Every time, depending on where they're going. Um, or... You can have someone scream in the left ear and someone respond in the right ear. Yep. And so using binaural audio is a fantastic trick. Yeah, and I think uh, the big difference between audio and visual is that you're using that, that person's imagination to create a lot of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so if you give them just a little bit of a push into the direction that you want them to go, um, they, their mind can basically take the rest of it. You know, mm -hmm. well, if, if you're using a visual medium, uh, basically you're showing them. And th I feel like this is more of, of, a, uh, of, of a theater of your mind kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why Mouse Up's <laughs> never described in yeah. season one. I was gonna say, like, what can you do? You can do everything, because you don't have to pay an artist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that too. I, I, mean, so, I mean, I grew up, uh, my mom had a box set of cassettes of, of audios. It was like mm -hmm. Amos and Andy and all these other things. So I just, I would just sit and listen to these. And the, the great part is it's like reading a book in that visually you imagine everything. Mm -hmm. So that's where it can get really, really powerful. Now you do have to be aware that you don't have visual tricks that you can use or visual cues. But outside of that, it can be whatever you want. And that's where it gets really powerful is that it, it is each person's mind that's listening that's creating all of that, that uh, all of that visual that's missing. And um, you can kind of trade off um, for what you can't show. Your characters can react or mm -hmm. self-narrate in a way that, that they normally wouldn't do if there was a visual medium. You know, if someone's pacing around a room, in a movie, we can see the distress on their face, but in an audio drama, they might be going, no, 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 this can't be it, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like, so you you can make that trade off, but it does take a little bit of learning, yeah, and, like, and like, fussing. Yeah, like in Continuum Force, we actually uh, to introduce the the characters and to introduce the the, the basic concept of the show, uh, we did a tour of the base with a senator, and one of the scenes that we we did was um, we had the big reveal of the ship. You know, it's supposed to be like the Enterprise. You know, the, mm -hmm. the cool thing. And when uh, the doors open and he walks in, uh, he's like. Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, you know, that kind of, and then the music kind of kicks in, and then you get, uh, in your mind, you just kind of see this amazing, cool looking ship. So, mm -hmm. and just uh, to add on to the uh, uh, binaural audio, also, if you're going to dig into mixing, uh, that kind of mixing, which it's not too hard, I recommend it. Also, doing high and low pass filters to actually add depth or directionality yeah. to where your sounds are coming from. <laughs> Next question. Big Finish. Big Yay. Finish Audios. Yay. Yes, Big I love Big audios. Finish. And one of the um, early ones uh, could only be told by audio dramas because uh, there's a they're in this soundscape where they're storing all this um, audio from around the universe. Um, and one of the characters is blind. And the twist at the end that um, I definitely didn't see coming is one of the characters is only audio. But because nobody ever commented on it and how the structure of the story was, it's, it's really cool, and it's kind of meta when it comes to telling audio stories, but it's worth looking up. Cool. I think did, you, did you know the name of there? it? No, I'll look it up and get cool. it to you in cool. a moment here. Okay, so I think... Yeah! Uh, is, is that Whispers of Terror? Yes. I think that's Whispers, Whispers of, of Terror. Whispers of Terror. Terror. Okay, yeah. I'm going to look that up. Um, so what do you think are some common mistakes or like something that you wish you could like go back and tell your former self about your first season versus... <laughs> like? 
don't don't do do don't do two all. shows at once. <laughs> <laughs> I would remake the entirety of season one if I could. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think telling. Uh, no, I want to keep everyone. <laughs> I just want to be a better director for all of you. <laughs> um, I think the the bigger the biggest lesson I learned easily probably about three or four episodes into season one was to let my actors run wild <laughs> because half my inspiration came from them because when you're making the show, David, who played Dr. Weissman, he spent all his time as Dr. Weissman. I spent all my time as 10 different people. So he was 100% in Dr. Weissman's headspace. And um, so I can put my trust in him that if he thinks Dr. Weissman needs to deliver it this way, he's probably right. And we would do a little bit of guidance, but um, I should have gone into it with the instinct to trust my actors, but I was just very anxious about it. Um, but in trusting them, I think we've gotten the best performances that we could have ever asked for. And 99% of these like great moments that I see you guys lose it in the Discord about came from the actors just doing what they do best because I just let them go and trusted them. Yeah. And I think for me, it was uh, be cognizant of episode length because uh, the first few episodes of Continuum Force were uh, about an hour and a half long. And Whew. I ended up having to cut those into ba uh, basically quarters, you know, because mm -hmm. most people, uh, when, they, when they listen to audio drama, it's usually about 25 to 30 minutes. That's about where we keep um, it, yeah. And... Uh, Cutting it up after you've written the script to be an hour and a half long is not easy to do. So, um, so yeah, I would definitely be co be cognizant of uh, the episode length. Yeah, I try to advise at least if you use the cell text creator, about 15 pages will yeah. give you about 25 minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, that was yeah. that was gonna be my next question: is how do you, yeah. when you're writing, think about episode length? 15 like pages. Yeah. yeah. So in film, uh, one page is one minute. In an audio drama, I would say one page is about two to three minutes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because especially once you start adding in all of your sound effects, mm -hmm. e even your intros and uh, your end credits, that's going to add an additional 10 minutes at least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the other things I think I would also avoid is, uh, especially we, did it with, we didn't do it so much with vampires, but we definitely did it with Continuum Force. Uh, we had way too many characters in the beginning. And uh, when we're trying to introduce <laughs> everybody and there's just so many characters to introduce, it's really hard to, to do that. So, yeah, we yeah. did that too. <laughs> <laughs> I would say definitely put extra time into your, your, your post-production sound yes. and fully. Mm -hmm. um, like even going back listening to early episodes of audio dramas I've worked on, I've been like, oh, wow, it, that sound mm -hmm. was... That was just bad. It would just yeah. Yeah. It just wasn't very good. Yeah, I've remastered um, basically both of our shows. Right. So, <laughs> so, so spend extra time on that. And also, when it comes to casting, don't cast people that uh, I don't want to say you don't like, but like people that are that are that are incredibly difficult in the way that they work. Especially if it doesn't work for you, I'm just, like prima donna. You're gonna spend a lot of time with these people. <laughs> prima donna would be basically basically a way to yeah. condense that kind of person, but. We lost a lot of, uh, not a lot, but two actors in particular because they just, they thought they were, they ruled the show and they were the most important characters. And like, look, this is all of us working together, even if you have more or less time on a given episode. Mm -hmm. And if they can't understand that, then those people can become very toxic. Mm -hmm. And it's better to, to just kind of part ways. As, mm -hmm. And when you're casting, like, even if they have the best voice ever, you sit down, you talk to them and go, yeah, you know what? I'd rather have someone whose voice maybe doesn't sound as cool as yours. But yeah, it's better to have a dedicated and reliable mm -hmm. actor who you can work with on their voice than to have the perfect voice and it be someone you wind up having to let go. Yep. Yeah, I'd be a little bit more passive aggressive about it and just kind of like kill them off. <laughs> See, I run a horror <laughs> show, so I can do that. No one will ever know. <laughs> we were superheroes. We weren't going to die. Oh, the <laughs> Oh, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> Kryptonite. Kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, finishing up, tell everyone. Um, where they can find you online, any other panels or things you're doing this weekend, go right ahead. Yep, I will be doing the <laughs> other audio drama panel, uh, which name escapes me at right uh, at this moment. It's yes, on, thank you. Yes, that's on Sunday. It's on our card, card, actually. It's on our card. I think yes, we're all on this one, on that one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all on that one. Yes. Okay, 1 p.m. Well, on Sunday. Come see us again. <laughs> I do have one fun panel on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. with the American Sci-Fi Classics track. I'm on the all-Nicolas Cage cage match. 
But I'm Heck only going to yes. be in it for a few minutes at the beginning Here's wearing you. my Voltron costume. Yep. Heck yeah. Solid. And I'll also be doing the American, uh, the Amazing Sci-Fi World of Steven Spielberg for the American Sci-Fi Classic. Oh, nice. It's going to be fun. Um, for our shows, uh, you can find us at continuumforce.transmissionsfromatlantis.com and vampiresofwhitechapel.transmissionsfromatlantis.com. Uh, so you can find me online, Instagram and Twitter, uh, at mail underscore NPC. Uh, the <laughs> best Twitter to every right? time I hear it. <laughs> yes. I get so uh, mad, it's perfect. Because <laughs> I wasn't taking Twitter seriously like 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, you can uh, find me on uh, other podcasts, the Dracula Radio Play on crypticanicals.com. It's in re-release right now, uh, so date to date it's coming out. Also uh, on my own podcast, Wasted Knowledge, which I have a live show Sunday at 10 p.m., uh, I'm also Saturday at four. I'll be taking care, uh, I'm taking care of your voice warm ups to War Cries. Uh, Saturday at eight thirty, Voice with Me, Character Voices. Sunday at hey, one, the audio drama, the and then too. Sunday at ten, Wasted yeah. Knowledge Live. We'll be interviewing uh, one of the heads of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Dr. Sarah Milkovich, who is Ooh. the head of the Mars Rover Twenty Twenty mission, awesome. nice. and making her cocktails. I mean, there might be booze involved. Um, okay. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter, Ellie underscore A underscore Collins. You can find me in this room in another half hour uh, doing the Blood Crow Stories live, premiering our fourth season, Eidolon, which is uh, Cults in Old Hollywood. Ooh. And then you can find me tomorrow doing the Speaking Out podcasting while LGBTQIA plus, 530 in here. Um, and then I will be doing Voices With Me, Character Voices. Eh. <laughs> We're just going to do a bunch of weird voices for an hour. Just gesture at each other and not make voices. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'll be doing audio drama production in you. And then you can just find me throughout the weekend and ask me anything. <laughs> yep. But all right. Thank you all so much for coming. You guys are fantastic. Yay. Remember, guys, if you like the panel, rate it. Leave comments. We do read the comments. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Finger. Uh.